खिचाल से पढ़ते रहो So thank you very much for uh, this introduction, and it's a, it's a great honor for me to be here this evening. Uh, I'm going to talk about mathematics. Actually, I'm going to talk about TED, which means technology, entertainment, and design. And, uh, and the, the critical issue, and the critical question is, why math matters with this story? And uh, I'll try to convince you in these 18 minutes that math matters. Uh, technology, math matters for, uh, for technology. Uh, this is uh, just a statement from uh, the OECD, which is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, 2008. And the statement is that technological innovation is increasingly based on the results and techniques of scientific research. That research, in turn, is both underpinned and driven by mathematics. So mathematics is uh, underpinning and driving uh, this research. And I would like to uh, try to convince you that Math is, uh, uh, first of all, very pervasive in our society. And, uh, and here are three examples. Of course, there are very, very many. But here are three of them. Uh, you know that if you want to have secure transactions by e-banking or uh, uh, using your uh, Visa card, for instance, um, um, you need to uh, use special devices and uh, uh, special uh, uh, criteria. And these criteria are, are driven by very sophisticated mathematical uh, uh, algorithms. And, uh, and what is surprising uh, to, uh, to see is that these algorithms are based on a number theory, which is perhaps the most abstract uh, branch of mathematics today, and actually is based on uh, factorization of prime numbers, which are considered to be completely useless concepts, right, for non-mathematicians. Now, if you use internet, if you want to search through internet, uh, uh, we, uh, we see that, uh, indeed, the key to a very fast search is uh, manipulating matrices and uh, devising suitable algorithms for uh, computing eigenvectors of matrices, still something quite hidden to the, uh, I would say, ordinary people. And if you want to transmit images through our uh, mobile phone, uh, we need uh, very sophisticated compression algorithms. Uh, let me just elaborate on a couple of points. Searching on the web, uh, it is estimated that there are about 230 million of websites and uh, about a thousand of billions of web pages today. Of course, it's increasingly exponentially fast. There's a billion and a half of users worldwide, and uh, and and of uh, course, uh, uh, when you go on the internet, you search an information. It's like going on a library and asking uh, uh, a lady uh, to uh, make a miracle, finding this information for you in a very very fast way. And uh, uh, how is that possible? Um, well, through the search engines. And there are very many. And uh, I'm going just to mention Google because it's perhaps one of the most uh, uh, powerful. And uh, uh, here is just, a, uh, let me see, a, a simulation, right? Assume that you are, uh, want to see what, is, uh, what you can find out by uh, printing TED Talks on Google. And uh, you see that in, uh, very, very quickly we have uh, about 29 uh, millions of pages in uh, uh, 0.08 seconds. So among 1,000 billions of web pages, Google is capable of retrieving uh, 29 millions uh, in just one-tenth of seconds. Uh, well, what, what, is the, uh, what is the explanation? The explanation is not so simple, but very roughly speaking, you can think of having several pages Many pages, a billion of uh, 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 many billions of pages, and uh, and then uh, uh, we would like to relate or to link the different pages through formulae, and the formula is uh, the page rank. So we want to see at which extent the page is important, and uh, of course we have to relate to the others through simple, like in this case, linear relationship. Uh, the point is that we have so many pages that this is going to be a system with a gigantic size. And how do you manipulate the system? How do you uh, find, extract from the system what is relevant, which is information on its eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and, and this is the recipe of Google. And you need efficiently, uh, extremely fast algorithms to be able to have all this information in such a short time. So can you say that Google is fast because of mathematics? I think that this is partly true, and uh, of course, uh, 
Uh, the fact that uh, today we can uh, manipulate this universe of information in such a short time is because we have efficient algorithms that have been developed in the past 10 or 15 years. Uh, we use our mobile phone. We have uh, uh, about two and a half billion of messages that are sent every day only in the US. Uh, now, assume that you want to send a picture through your mobile phone, and this is very natural. Now, today we consider this as a kind of inevitable, right? It's free, it's absolutely available. Uh, you send a message and you receive a message with the uh, good quality, the quality that you actually uh, would like to have. Uh, so what does really happen? Uh, indeed, you send this picture into an algorithm, uh, which is, say, a fast wave transfer. You digitalize it, you transmit it, you receive it, and then you have to decompress this information and use the inverse of the same transfer. Now, these transforms are mathematical algorithms that were invented not billions of years ago, but just 15 or, say, 18 years ago, and are constantly improved. And it's only because of that that today we are capable of doing such a very natural thing in such a quick and easy, easy way. In fact, the message is that in our daily life, there is more mathematics that you can think of. And mathematics is almost everywhere. Uh, well, if we can exaggerate a little bit, we can say that water is mathematics, or water can be, can be expressed by mathematical equations. If you can solve these mathematical equations, you have a complete picture about what is going on in the water. You know the velocity, the pressure, the temperature, and whatever. Uh, the, uh, the sea waves can be described by simple, say, for a mathematician, mathematical equations. Uh, the uh, competition between predators and prey uh, can still be, and again, be uh, reproduced by, or expressed by mathematical systems equations. And you can discover very important uh, uh, element in nature, for instance, the, the pattern of lemurs, uh, this uh, beautiful and regular distribution of stripes of zebras. Or, uh, uh, say, you take the uh, butterfly fish with these stripes, which are so regularly distributed and so wonderful, again, these can be uh, expressed in terms of a system that is called diffusion system, still ruled by, governed by mathematical equations. So there's a lot of mathematics in nature. But, but you can use mathematics for not only for uh, observing nature, for interpreting nature, you can use mathematics for, uh, in a functional way to uh, design, uh, to uh, entertain. Uh, your partners. And, uh, and the, key, the, key, uh, the key point or the key word is models, mathematical models. What is a mathematical model? A mathematical model describes world through equations. So you have two basic concepts, the models and the equations. You need equations to form a model and the model is there to describe reality. Uh, uh, the real world, and this is a cartoon, uh, is becoming, uh, through this box, a mathematical world. And this is the model box, right? The modeling box. Now, uh, let, me, let me make a, a comment here. Uh, mathematics is, uh, is a virtual lab, is an immaterial lab. Right? And I think this is the most important strength of mathematics. Um, you can uh, use mathematics to predict impact of earthquakes, like, say, this is a very important uh, architectural heritage in our country, and math is not destructive. You don't need to uh, go to the lab and, 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 or uh, try to use a real uh, seismic wave on the Colosseum to see the way this uh, mathematical representation of the Colosseum will react to an external impulse. And you can describe different kinds of scenarios. You have a, a wave that is propagating, is creating a deformation on the structure. You can consider different kinds of scenarios and see the way the structure will react to a, a very extreme event. Math is using uh, for human life. Uh, well, this is our cardiovascular system, our circulatory system, which is made of uh, uh, hundreds of big arteries and veins and uh, thousands of uh, small veins and arteries and billions uh, uh, of capillaries. Uh, it's a very complex system, like the, uh, I would say, uh, the uh, traffic system of a big country. Right? Uh, how can you model it? Well. Uh, you have to start from data. You have to start from clinical imaging. You have to create a volumetric construction. You want to solve the problem in a coronary. You have to have a picture of the coronary. 
that you get from MRI or CT scan. And uh, on that ground, you have to construct a solid model, solid three-dimensional model. Then you need mathematical equations, and this is the model in part, to describe the way blood flows into our vessels. Then you need to compute the solution. You need big computers because this is a very big problem to be handled. And then you're ready to face clinical applications or to simulate different possibilities of making surgical interventions, for instance, without touching the patient. Uh, or uh, optimizing prosthetic devices, optimizing a bypass or a shunt. See, math is not invasive. You can use it in many different contexts, describing different kinds of scenarios, different kinds of opportunities, and try to end up with quantitative and uh, hopefully very, very useful uh, information. Uh, this is the carotid artery, uh, which is in our neck. And this is the uh, blood flow in the carotid artery on a single heartbeat. You see here this uh, wavelet, which is describing the uh, um, peak of uh, uh, the impulse of, uh, provided by the heart on a single heartbeat. Uh, so this is, sold by, this is obtained by solving uh, an equation that is called um, Navistox equations. And uh, here is the same kind of equation. However, this time, this artery is much more realistic because you have the interaction with the deformation of the, or the arterial wall. So here we try to simulate the way healthy arteries are behaving. And of course, once you have those kind of uh, um, models, uh, you can uh, understand or better understand the way uh, unhealthy arteries uh, with plaques of, uh, or, or, or a stiffness, which is not the healthy one, can behave under the action of uh, the uh, uh, blood flows. Um, you can uh, be a bit, or, a bit more ambitious in describing the whole ascending aorta. Here are two, this is physical time. Uh, you go from zero up to 1.8. These are two, sec two heartbeats, actually, almost two seconds. You see the streamlines. You see the way blood bl flows in the aorta. Here you see the, the carotid arteries. You see here the deformation of the, uh, um, of the, of the aorta uh, in terms of displacement. And here you see the uh, particle trach and say. Now everything is steady, is at the end of the first cycle, and then you start the second cycle with the second pulsation, and again you see the way blood is uh, flowing into our aorta. Um, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, go along and see the way blood is behaving in a bifurcation, for instance, in the iliac artery. And uh, again, this is an healthy situation that you can uh, uh, simulate through mathematical equations uh, now this is the bifurcation. You see the way you have recirculation past the bifurcation. Now you know that in uh, our body, uh, very often you may develop uh, atherosclerotic thickening past bifurcation. So this is why it's so important to have uh, clear and accurate uh, solvers or uh, mathematical models that can predict the way uh, blood behaves uh, uh, past bifurcations. Uh, you can. Uh, try to use models to design new bypasses. Like in this case, you have a, you have a bypass graft, you have an, a, an occluded artery, the abdominal aorta, and you put this bypass graft in order to simulate the recirculation that you have. And uh, by so doing, you can have an idea on the way you can get the optimal shape of these two branches. This is artificial of these branches in order to uh, uh, reduce the, say, uh, unstable or turbulent sometimes behavior of blood uh, after the uh, creation of a, of, a, of a bypass. Of course, you can use math models for the brain, uh, and the ambition is to understand the way our brain, our brain works. And uh, here is another mathematical simulation in which you see uh, that uh, the, the way the pressure behaves in the brain under the action of the heartbeat. On the other side, you see here the way oxygen diffuses through the circle of Willis. This is the circle of Willis, which is at the baseline of our brain. So that's a very complex system. We are trying to combine different types of components and try to see the way the system reacts in, uh, in either physiological or pathological condition. You can simulate what happens when one of these branches is closed. And this happens. And the way our brain redistributes blood flow in, uh, on, the old, uh, on the old system, say. Uh, you can use this kind of scenarios. Uh, you can use a non-invasive type of analysis and that's very important because there is no protocol to, uh, to, uh, to observe, of course. Uh, you can use mathematics for uh, uh, having uh, uh, for increased performance in sports uh, to design, uh, for instance, a Formula One car. And, uh, and, and these, again, are very important 
figure, I'd say, uh, today it is estimated that the performance of a, a racing car is due by 15% to the engine, the 35% to the weight, and up to 50% to aerodynamics. This is why it's so important to have the optimal design to try to improve the design beforehand. And uh, if you look at here, the classical uh, uh, time loop uh, uh, to get a car produced in nine months, uh, well, you need actually only one month to manufacture it, or to assemble it, and you need eight months to, uh, for the virtual design. And the here is where you use mathematics. So most of the time is spent on paper and pencil, or on the computer, say, and, uh, and this is why math is such a, an immaterial lab. And uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting laboratory because it's cheap. You can uh, change many parameters in your uh, design, and uh, again, you do it on paper and pencil. You don't need to, to do it. You don't, you don't have to make it in reality. It's cheap. It's fast. You can try many, many scenarios. You uh, can try hundreds of different scenarios, different shapes. And, uh, and this uh, and is optimal. It's optimal because you can aim at building optimal solutions, say. Uh, you can use it, of course, for technology in the aerospace industry to go from a conceptual design through its geometrical interpretation through the solution using mathematical models. You can use it in, uh, um, for uh, America's Cup uh, competitions where, uh, again, uh, you start from uh, a, a preliminary design, uh, you uh, uh, turn it into a geometric design by the CAD and by grid generation, say, and then you use the model to simulate what's going on to compute the pressure, the forces, the streamlines, the turbulences, uh, and, uh, and uh, you can uh, consider the three vital components of uh, a flow field around a boat, the, uh, the waves, this is the wave pattern, this is America's Cup hull, and that's the way the waves are developing and are, uh, of course, uh, uh, wetting the, uh, the surface. Uh, you can uh, uh, simulate uh, the uh, turbulence uh, past the appendages. These are bulb, these are the winglets, this is uh, the keel, and, uh, and this is the rudder. And uh, you can uh, uh, simulate wind uh, around uh, sails. And uh, this is a very complex problem because you have uh, uh, the flow equations uh, on a turbulent flow. You have, uh, you see, you have flow separations. Uh, you have uh, uh, structural dynamics, uh, namely a code that is capable of reproducing the displacement, uh, the strain and stresses in a solid structure like sails, and, and you have their interaction, which is a fast, nonlinear, dynamic interaction. And once you have your code optimized, you can uh, just simulate uh, the real uh, competition uh, you can see uh, the way forces are distributing uh, on the whole uh, uh, components of, uh, the, um, of the boat, and uh, you can also predict uh, the, uh, uh, you can also use what is called game theory to predict the behavior of the two competitors in uh, very severe um, conditions. And uh, this is uh, uh, the end of my presentation. I'd like to thank you very much.